we need to have a better understanding of yes. what's going on, what Islam is about. Yes. Right? Okay, great. So I'd like to start from the beginning, right? Um, why man was even created, right? And we actually had a group of Christians coming in yesterday. We just had a presentation about the same nice. thing with them, right? So, so to summarize that, basically, you know, there was a time when human being did not exist. Sure. Right? And then that, that time, basically, what was there was the other creations of Allah, right? Uh, and then there was two types of other creations, which are more important for our discussions. One is angels, right, which you're familiar with. Of course. So angels are a creation of Allah, essentially created from light, right? And they don't uh, disobey Allah. Uh, Can I have the imams yeah. I need that one as well later. Because Rashid Bermani, Mickey Mouse. So he has the okay, yeah, sure. Okay, um, right. So, angels created from light and they don't disobey Allah, right? So, they do whatever Allah commands them to do, right? And that's interesting because that, that shows the ability of Allah to God to create creation that will not disobey, right? Yes. So, they will do exactly what Allah wants them to do, which is kind of shows one aspect of how Allah is, who Allah is, and how powerful He is, and that He does not need anybody to acknowledge Him, He does not need anybody to worship Him, because if He wanted, He can just create as many as He like, and they will not disobey. So that's one type of creation. There was another type of creation, um, which is basically um, jinn, or, um, so that's, yeah, just, let's just use the Arabic word, because I don't know if any, you, some people use the word jinni, right? So that's another type of creation of Allah, which is from fire. Right, and they have a free will just like you and I also have a free will, right? So, from that free will, they can choose to submit to Allah or they can choose to disobey Allah, right? So, so they exist, right, as a second creation. And then Allah tells them at one point that I'm going to be creating human beings and I'll put them on earth, right? So, they will be the successor on earth and I'm choosing them to be created on earth, okay? So, the human being also has free will, right? And the angels knew that. And so they asked Allah that why would you create someone who would, you know, cause corruption and would also cause, you know, bloodshed, right? Just because he has that free will. Sure. And, you know, we always glorify you, we obey you, we praise you and so on and so forth, right? So now that's a question of understanding. They want to understand what's going on. So Allah tells them uh, that I know what you don't know, right? And uh, there's a great lesson in there. Right, the basically the aspect of knowledge, right? So our knowledge, the whole creation's knowledge, will never be equal to the knowledge of Allah, right? It cannot be otherwise, you know, creation, creator, right? Big difference, right? How can it be equal? So, fine, this is a part of submission, right? Okay, so we don't get it, we don't know why you want to create him, but fine, I mean, you obviously you know better, right? So, that's how angels are, right? Now, you know, from reflection and from some scholars, they would describe that look. The purpose, like, there's a lot of wisdom behind human creation, right? If there was no human, right, how do you, you know, how do you have good and bad, right? How do you differentiate between good and bad, the, the friends of Allah versus the enemies of Allah, the people of paradise versus the people of hellfire, right? Uh, human being making error that gives you a chance to see the mercy of Allah, the, the forgiveness of Allah, uh, and then the repentance of human being and, ex and Allah's accepting of that repentance, right? All that thing. You basically wouldn't have any idea about it. You would be you have a big blind spot if you don't have human making mistakes. Make sense? Sure. Fair enough. So, so then to manifest that human superiority, Allah teaches Adam, the first man, which is a common father that we all have, some information, names about things, what things are for, their names and things like that. He gave them knowledge that the angels and they and, and Satan or jinns don't have, right? So he gave them some knowledge. And then he asked. Say to, uh, the angels, tell me the names of these things if you know. Okay. Right? He presented those things to angels, and then they said that, look, we, we don't know. Glory to be you, and you are the one who knows everything, and we don't know. We only know what you have taught us. Right? Then Allah asks Adam. Yeah, sir. Yeah. The of my wife is calling me. Do you want to speak to her? She doesn't call me like that, sir. Okay. Hello? So, okay. you know, mm -hmm. Allah asked angels, you know, do you know the name of these things? Mm -hmm. And they said, no, we don't know, you know, we only know what you've taught us. And then Allah tells Adam, tell them the names, right? And he just tells them the names, right? So this basically establishes the superiority of Adam, that, that look, he has some knowledge, and there's a lot that you guys don't know, right? And this basically is a manifestation of that. And Allah says that, you know, I know 
what is the hidden in the heavens and the earth and i know that which you reveal and that which you hide right yeah okay so so far so good now we have three types of creation there humans jinns angels right no problem with the angels angels are our supporters allies they obey allah they support us and they support everybody who is a, who's obedient to allah right so allah tells them to prostrate to adam right as a as a form of submission so they're doing that so there is adam i know i the oh. adam in, in yes yeah, so adam is the first the human man the first man yeah. that was created right yeah. and from him as we, we have all descended sure. so allah commands them to, to prostrate to adam right showing and establishing the superiority and the honor of adam over them right would angels have a problem with that no right no problem but now the jinn who also has a free will like whoa what's going on mm -hmm. i'm gonna go down to this new creation mm -hmm. right i'm created from fire this is created from dust mm -hmm. you know i've been there all the time and just mm -hmm. like big arrogance issue there right it doesn't matter who the order is coming from it's just now he's just talking about himself arrogance mm -hmm. like he challenges allah right and no i'm not going to appreciate to him you know i'm better than him i'm from fire he's from mm -hmm. dust blah 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 basically argument right from allah that created the one who created him the one who owns him everything but just this is where arrogance kicks in right no submission just arrogance fine so Allah tells him that's it right i mean you don't want to obey me you know that's it you don't you know you'll be rejected you'll be repelled be thrown out of the you know the heavens this company all this blessing that you have will be taken away and uh, satan then says that basically uh give me respite till the last day and i will show you that this creation of yours will not be grateful to you right i will also mislead them and they will not be grateful to you although you're honoring them allah says fine you know you do what you want to do and uh, basically my chosen servants the ones who believe in me the ones who rely on me and so on and so forth you will have no power over them right so the ones who are your followers are destined are the ones that basically is what, what they deserve they deserve to follow you and those are the ones who will follow you right but my servants the people who believe in me the people who trust in me do have true dependence on me will be following me okay so fine he was given that he openly challenged allah there's no sorry no apologies basically pure arrogance okay then allah says to adam and he creates a wife for him that you and your wife you guys live in paradise you eat enjoy just have fun no obligations no restrictions except one which is don't worry about this tree don't go near this tree don't eat from there everything else open field right and as far as we know no reason was given it's not like oh this tree has fat cholesterol <laughs> you're gonna get intoxicated mm -hmm. whatever nothing just don't worry about this tree right and pure submission no problem thank you for all these things right who, who cares about that one tree mm -hmm. so that so anyways that was how it was happening but the satan he's gonna now go and try to show that this creation is ungrateful right so he kept going to adam consistently it wasn't like a one-time thing he kept going saying okay you're gonna eat from this tree you're gonna become like angels you will never die it's so much benefit there kept doing that until once you know they fall you know pray to that they slip and they basically ate from that mm -hmm. when they did that you know details happen like their clothes were taken away and so on and so forth not super important but uh for our discussion at the moment but then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells them right i mean i told you this is your enemy not to go near the tree now here the difference comes in right so before when satan disobeyed he justified his disobedience right he argued he justified his disobedience he used his own limited intellect to argue against the intellect of allah right so now these guys they could have done you know what a lot of humans do today oh why did you even create the tree why not guard guard it why not take it away freedom of speech freedom of choice so on and so forth you know there's so much restriction none of that right what they did was we are sorry we wronged ourselves we shouldn't have done that and now if you are not to forgive us we'll become the losers right so they're asking for forgiveness from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they're fully taking responsibility of their action acknowledging it and they're sorry about it you know they wish they wouldn't have done that and they're asking for forgiveness so allah basically forgives them all right so this is now how you see the forgiveness of allah right before you also see down so now you're seeing a complete picture much better right so against with angels there's no forgiveness needed 
right? Yeshua. Now you see a forgiveness, you see repentance, you see different attributes, mm -hmm. right? With Satan, you also need, you see another side of it, which is that, you know, like you, you, you are ripped away from mercy, you're not going to be in paradise, right? At the same time, I will let you live, but you're still under my control. You have some freedom, but you cannot escape the, the overall plan of Allah. Right? So you see, this shows you like how complete and perfect God is, right? Without these elements, it will be hard for us to even understand that. Fair enough. So after that, Allah sends Adam, Eve, Satan, everybody on this earth that we know today, right? And he says that, you know, when my guidance comes to you, whoever will follow it will have no fear and no anxiety, no grief, no fear, nothing, right? But the ones who deny me, the ones who deny my signs, my, my guidance, they reject it, they rebel against it, they fight it, they will be the people of hellfire and they will live in it forever. Okay, so that's basically the nutshell of it, right? So now the point being,